Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at this week's pre orders, and they are live. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. All right, so here we've got our Saturday pre orders going up here. And uh, first off the bat, we got a couple of made to orders Gaunt's Ghost Books. So if you're after first and only or Necropolis, here's your chance to get them made to order. And then we have the Combat Patrol Astra Militarum. So this is the first of the Combat Patrols to be hit with the price increase. The increase doesn't technically go into effect for a couple more weeks. Uh, but they are releasing this this close to the price rise. They typically will release the new products at the new price. And then just let everything else catch up when the increase goes into effect. So if you're curious if this is the final price for the Astra Militarum Combat Patrol. Or if it's going to go up after the price increase. More likely than not, we can say with almost certainty that this is the official price going forward for combat patrols in the United States. So all the existing combat patrols I expect to go from $150 to $160 and that to be the regular price going forward. So I want to real quickly address the quote unquote leaked spreadsheet or price list from Games Workshop. It was supposedly showing increases of 15 or even upward of 20%. And then supposedly after this was leaked, Games Workshop rolled it back. While in the past we have seen them announce 6% price increases and actually do closer to a 12% price increase, the idea of them saying they were going to do 6% and then raising to 20, 25, or even 30 in some cases on the quote unquote leaked price list is just absolutely ridiculous. So obviously that leaked piece of material was complete BS. And of course, Games Workshop denied that it was true because it wasn't true. Somebody made it on their computer and then spread it through the internet to scare people. So that being said, let's continue on here, knowing that in the future, most of the combat patrols, if not all of them, will be at that $160 price point. Which also, if you're still after starting an Astro Militarum army, the way to go is to get the special order box. Because now at this being 160 and that being 200 you basically pay $40 and you get the codex and the cards for free. So it's definitely worth it. So next we have our character, the Cadian Castellan. $35 for this guy. He's pretty cool, but I'm not happy about the idea of now like a tiny little Imperial Guard character costing the same amount as a big old Space Marine chunky boy. Uh, next we have the Attilan Rough Riders. These guys are super cool. Definitely a big fan of the models. Uh, they actually are pretty good in game terms too. 60 bucks for these. I think they'll be pretty popular and probably the first round of them will sell out pretty quickly. I don't think it's crazy to think that we will see armies with like 30 of these. Like three big squads of 10. They're not particularly cheap and it's a serious investment. And honestly, because they're on cavalry, even with the increased movement from the horse, it really restricts the way that they're able to move. But as like a counter charge, counter line defense, uh, these guys are really good. So... And then we have our Acadian upgrades. So these are cool, a bunch of cool little upgrades, some helmets, heads, little accessories and everything. Pretty neat. $35 for them. Definitely pricey, especially when we compare it to like our chapter upgrade sprues and stuff like that. I don't think it's a surprise to everyone that Games Workshop is slowly moving their minimum priced items upward with the intention that the smallest thing you could purchase is closer to like that $35 range. We see it with the characters, with the upgrades, and uh, soon I think we'll see it with a lot of the other uh lower priced items as well so next we have the commissar again cool model definitely a fan but the 35 dollars price tag on this guy is ridiculous next we have the aegis defense line so this thing is super cool i was pretty excited for it i really like the look of it the modularity and all that stuff uh, but again seeing that 75 dollars price jump i'm just going to hang tight on this at some point in time if i'm going to use it in my army maybe i'll pick one up but uh the Initial rush and excitement to run out and pick one of these up uh, has faded quickly. Next we have Captain Messinius of the White Consoles. This is a pretty cool Space Marine character. It is neat to see the characters from the books come to life. So definitely a neat looking model. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that is ridiculously excited about this guy. I do like all of the extra ornate bits on him and everything. And he's coming in at $38 uh, right around your typical Space Marine character. All right, and then we've got some books, books, and more books. So the Black Library Celebration 2023 paperback is free with purchase of any other items from Black Library. And then we see Siege of Terra, The End and the Death, Volume 1, Limited Edition, $80 for that. And that is signed and numbered. And like all the limited editions, uh, honestly, if you're after these things, I wouldn't hesitate because they do sell out pretty quickly. 
and they are almost immediately for sale at two or three times the price online. The Iron Kingdom Next Special Edition, 75 bucks for that. Again, a limited edition item, signed and numbered. And then we see Angels of Darkness, the 20th edition hardback. Uh, so 30 bucks for that. And we have the Siege of Terra and in Death Volume 1 in hardback, $30 for that. The book in that picture looks super, super chunky, substantially more chunky than the limited edition book, although I'm sure they're much more closer in size. And then we have the first founding hardback, 75 bucks for that. Uh, so if you're after one of those, here's your opportunity. And then moving right along, uh, we've got some more new stuff and some old classics return. So the Bad Loon Rising hardback, 27 bucks. The Iron Kingdom paperback for 16 bucks. Macarian Crusade, Angel of Fire, $16. And then we see Skarsnik as well for $16. And we also have the Gaunt's Ghost, Ghostmaker in hardback, if you're looking to uh, get that MTO. And then after that, we've just got the uh, leftovers from last week's pre-orders, which are now available to purchase. So we have the Kill Team Hand of Archon dice set, $35 for those bad boys. And those are the first of the Kill Team dice that have dropped down from 20 down to 15. So feel free to join my dice boycott whenever you're ready. I'll be here boycotting dice in the meantime. And then we have that Kill Team Kill Zone Upgrade Shadow Vault. So there's some cool stuff on here. I really like the little bolter turret and like the little bomb disposal device or like hatch cutter. And then these are some cool little bits and everything. So if you are into like the scatter terrain and stuff like that, there's some optional pieces that you can use in various games. Um, also for boarding actions as well, you'll note that they have the addition of the optional upgrade pieces. Uh, so cool stuff right there if you're after them. And if you missed out on Shadow Vaults, uh, that was basically the super unique thing that was included in the set. So being able to grab that for 35 bucks, honestly, I think is a good thing. Uh, and then we see the Farstalker Kinban dice set and the Imperial Navy Breacher dice set. Uh, so both of those are from the old run of dice. So they're priced at 38 instead of 35 but they do include 20 dice instead of 15. So these are the last sets that we'll ever see for Kill Team with 20 dice in a set as now Games Workshop has shrinkflationed the dice down to 35. And you may notice also that the Adeptus Arbites dice are missing as well. Uh, so at some point in time, we will probably see them show up uh, with 35 in the set for $35. So at some point in time, we will see them show up with 15 in a set for $35. But for whatever reason, they didn't make the cut this week. And then we have the Into the Dark book and the Kill Team Shadow Vaults book. 45 bucks a piece for those. As well as the Farstalker Kin Band, the Crute War Band for 60 bucks. And now a quick message from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by CMOGames.com. Where you can get 15% off most Games Workshop pre-orders. And they go live right at midnight Saturday mornings. CMOGames.com offers free shipping on orders over $25 in the US 48. And most orders ship within 24 hours. CMOGames.com has been selling Games Workshop products online for more than 20 years, and customer service is their top priority. CMOGames.com carries the full line of Games Workshop products, including 40K, Age of Sigmar, Kill Team, Warcry, Paints, Hobbies, and Tools. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description below so they know you heard about CMOGames.com from Warhammer Man Studios. Now, back to the video. And then we have the Warcry Hunters of Haunchy, the Imperial Navy Breachers, the Herotech Circle, all 60 bucks for those. And then we see the new Legion Skyhunter jet bikes. $60 for those things. Pretty cool. I'm surprised that there wasn't more demand for these. But honestly, we've been discussing it lately. And the hype and excitement behind the Horus Heresy has definitely faded substantially. Next, we have the Warcry Jade Obelisk. Super cool warband right here. Uh, the Zinch themed one. Definitely a big fan of them from the Sunder Fate as well. We see that Kill Zone Gallo Dark. $150 for this substantially overpriced in my opinion just absolutely ridiculous to see the 150 dollars price tag on this hopefully nobody buys this because it is just a straight ripoff you might as well just buy the into the dark set and get everything included in this for just a couple bucks more and then the last couple items was the war cry blood hunt so this was basically a big flop uh they treated it exactly the same as they treated soul shackle as if the two games were going to be equally popular and there was risk of them both selling out they essentially just restricted copies to all of your local friendly game stores. Uh, in most cases, they got two copies of these last three items or even zero. And Games Workshop went ahead and sold as many as they could through the web store, which in the case of Soul Shackle and the Casterkins, they completely sold out. 
So obviously, what does this mean? It means Games Workshop knew there was going to be issues with these items and they wanted to funnel all the sales directly through the web store so that they could cut out the middleman, which is your friendly local game store. And they anticipated this very clearly. Anyone knew that they were going to sell out quickly with the Casterkins and Soul Shackle. But for whatever reason, they just grouped Warclaw Blood Hunt in there as well, assuming that it would have the same issues. And of course, it did not even remotely have the same issues. And a matter of fact, if you just check in the web store currently, for the first time ever, we actually see that Warcry Blood Hunt and also Warcry Sundered Fate, the two expansions for Warcry, are both still offered in the store at the same time, uh, which has never happened before. Typically, they remove the old expansion before they put the new one in the store. Uh, in this case, they must be sitting on a stack of them because they are both still available. And while I do love Warcry, uh, it's just not nearly as popular. And honestly, if Games Workshop knew that there was going to be this much issue with the Casterkins or the Soul Shackle, I mean, they had plenty of time to make more copies. I find it very hard to believe that they suddenly realized that these things were going to be in high demand, but it was just too late for them to produce more. So really, really capitalizing on the FOMO with both of these items. At some point in time, the Casterkins will for sure come back in stock and be part of the regular line. It could be months. Uh, but as far as Soul Shackle, there's talks of them running it back again. But honestly, after the Christmas debacle with the Knights box set, there was talks of a second printing. And honestly, I think a lot of the times the reps just say that to make store owners and people feel better about missing out on something. Uh, we almost never, with the exception of Warhammer Quest Curse City. That was the only time we ever saw something sell out. There was a huge uproar about it. And then later, it was actually brought back for a made-to-order situation. And then finally, to be part of the actual line. But honestly, by then, the hype was dead. And uh, it was pretty much a flop. So that being said, I would not get excited for a copy of Soul Shackle to just suddenly show up in the store or at your friendly local game store. But if it happens, I wouldn't hesitate to snag it up. And also, I would be very grateful if it does. But that being said, very surprised to see that they didn't put the new price increase on the Blood Hunt and Soul Shackle games. Uh, maybe just because they're limited time in the store. But they did start rolling it out on the Astro Militarum line. So that being said, we're already seeing the price increases go into effect. And so far, they are basically in line with what Games Workshop said. $10 on 150 is basically 6%, slightly more than that. But it's nowhere near the 20 to 30% increases that we saw on the quote unquote leaked Games Workshop prices spreadsheet. So that being said, yes, prices are going up. We have a pretty good idea how they're going to go up. Some things are definitely going to go up more than Games Workshop said. That's just how it works. Uh, they're going by an average price increase. I'm sure some other things will not go up at all or less than 6%. So we know the price increase is coming. We've already seen how it's going to affect at least the Astro Militarum, Combat Patrol, and individual models. And I think we should just assume that it's going to be similar to this throughout the range. There's definitely going to be some surprise items that go up way more than we expected. There's definitely going to be some items that don't move at all. But when it's all said and done, it's probably going to be something around 6 to 10%. It's definitely not going to be 22 or 30%. Matter of fact, I'd be very surprised if we even find one item that goes up by 20 or 30 percent so that's it for this week this is the uh, last of the big astro Militarum reveals and remainder of the items for the range showing up here so for you guard players out there i'm sure this is super exciting uh, i'm gonna go ahead and pass on everything this week take a little time off from purchasing fresh games workshop stuff when the time is right i will swoop back in and make my purchases but in the meantime uh, maybe i'll just buy a little bit of the old stuff before the price increases hit it and uh, hold out for some of the new stuff I'm waiting on, like the World Eaters Combat Patrol, which obviously we'll see at the new price of 160 unfortunately. So that's it for this week. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring the video. Check out their link in the description to save 15% on pre-orders and existing Games Workshop products. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.